Takes the snap, three-step drop, pocket clean, fires left side like caught Dingle. First down and out of bounds on the left side at the Florida 30-yard line. Ten-yard gain. Javon Dexter applying the pressure, but Levis beat him. And a good job of Levis going to his secondary receiver. And the tight end, Dingle, was actually in a fullback position, kind of a two-running back look. He leaks out to the left. Levis looks inside and in rhythm throws it to Dingle outside. Levis, who only completed 41 of his passes last year against Florida in the win, is 4 for 4 to start the ball game. He'll go under center, first down and 10 at the Gator 30-yard line, maybe changing the play as he looks to both sides. Now moves his right leg twice. He'll hand it off, cutting to the right side, and nowhere to go is Lavelle Wright as Ventrell Miller filled the gap, only a gain of one. And even though that's not productive in terms of getting yards on that first down run, you can't abandon the run because remember, it sets the table for the other things that you're already doing well on this drive. The play action pass, throwing to tight ends, those type of things. I would think Mark Stoops and Rich Scangarello happy on this series again. Down three running backs, including their starter, Chris Rodriguez, who didn't play last week. Not playing tonight. Reports are waiting on an NCAA eligibility issue. Might miss the first three games, according to that report. Second down and nine. Snap to Levis. Looking left. Still looking. Hit from the right side and obliterated by Justice Boone. There is a flag down, though, right at the line of scrimmage. Could be targeting on that hit against the passer, Will Levis. And that may very well be the penalty because Boone just come, comes unglued and May has dropped his helmet a little bit into the quarterback. Personal foul, targeting number 12 on the defense. The previous play is under further review. That's Matt Leffler, our referee. The crowd's not happy. The first look at replay, I don't know if he bent his head as much as I thought in live play. We'll get a slower frame-by-frame -frame look. Kelly, what'd you see? Well, remember there are two different types. First of all, there's the indicator is the launch of a defender into a defenseless player, which a passer is. And so then it's any forcible contact in the head and shoulder area. I think that's targeting. I think it's going to be held up. And I think Boone's going to be out of the game. Let's check in with Ian Fitzsimmons. Field level, field level guys, I did not think it was targeting. Watching the replay, the moment that Levis turned around is when, you know, Justin got there almost bang, bang in the moment. Violent does not necessarily mean illegal. In the moment, field level, watching it without a replay, I did not, I would not have thrown a flag. He doesn't drop his head, does Boone, but there's... Forcible contact above the shoulders in the head and neck, and this was directly into the face mask. That's textbook targeting second variety. It's not the crown of the helmet variety. After review, there is no targeting. Yeah. Number 12 stays in the game. It's third down. If we're not going to eliminate that hit by a defender, targeting has no place in the game. Well, interesting, Steve Shaw, who's the uh, national head of officials last week, said there were 23 targeting calls. 21 others were overturned by replay. They have to look at all the different indicators. And as you can imagine, the crowd here, happy that they did not call targeting. But you're right, Will Levis never saw him, and Ian was right. Just as he was turning his head to the right was exactly the moment Justice Boone, looking right at the quarterback, got him right in the head, I mean, vicious right enough and knocked off mask. his helmet. It yeah. was literally right in the face mask. It wasn't with the crown of the helmet, but it was in the face mask on a defenseless player. That's letter B in the description of targeting. I don't know what else you would want to hold that targeting up, but Fitzy's right in this case, at least as far as the replay booth is concerned. I couldn't agree, disagree more. Well, they have to take Will Levis out for a play because his helmet came off. And so Deuce Hogan, the Iowa transfer, 6'4", 205, sophomore from South Lake, Texas, getting ready to come in and getting a quick lesson from Rich Scangarello, the offensive coordinator. Off that sack, by the way, was a loss of seven 
So this turns this into third and 17 with the young Deuce Hogan taking over the controls. And they're kind of right on the edge of a decent field goal attempt, so you can't take a sack right now if you're Hogan. Probably need about seven yards at least to get into field goal range. From the 37 of Florida. Tight end motioning on the line. Hand off Cavassier Smoke. Went left. Tried to cut inside. Nowhere to go. Knocked down by Jervon Dexter. No gain. It's fourth down. And the question is with Rich Scangarillo, is this four down territory? Because obviously a punt doesn't do you any good. And you're out there in maybe career type of make for the field goal kicker in this particular situation. Matt Ruffalo had a career-high tying 50-yard field goal a week ago. They did go for one fourth down last week, did not convert. And with 4.57 and the clock rolling here in the first quarter, Florida three, Kentucky nothing. They're going to set up for a punt, short punt. Colin Goodfell standing at midfield. Xavier Henderson to our right at the three-yard line and a whistle on the snap. Play clock wound down. Delay again. They're going to take that on delay. Give him a little more room. Yeah. Five, five yards yards back. Fourth down. And I'm watching Will Levis on the sideline, and it looks like a boxer that is in his corner. He's getting Vaseline on the bridge of his nose because that's exactly where that face mask exits when a defender takes it off of your head. Justice Boone is a redshirt freshman from South Carolina, and he had a clean shot, as clean as he gets. Here's the punt spiraling, fair catch signal, and made at the 10-yard line by Xavier Henderson, and it will be Florida Bowl with the 3-0 lead backed up on their 10-yard line. 4.33 to go, opening quarter from the Swamp. It's the Gators, 3-0 over Kentucky. This is college football on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app presented by Dr. Pepper. With gas prices at an all-time high, you're probably looking for ways to cut costs. Like no more road trips, restaurants, movies. Basically, no more fun. But there's a better solution. Rocket Money helps rev up your finances so you're ready for whatever comes your way. The app tracks your spending and gives you real-time alerts so you never overdraft again. With the app, you can see all your subscriptions at a glance and cancel the ones you don't want in seconds. Rocket Money can even lower your bills by up to 20%. No calls to customer service required. Plus, you can put your savings on autopilot, so you can build up cash without ever having to think about it. Our users report that the Rocket Money app saved them more than $700 a year. With Rocket Money, you can get your finances headed in the right direction, so you don't have to put the brakes on everything you love to do. To learn more, go to rocketmoney.com slash stream to download today. Or download the Rocket Money app from the Apple app or Google Play stores. <laughs> the first cup of coffee, it was awful. Meet Rod Johnson, co-founder of Black & Bold, a premium specialty coffee and tea company powered by Shopify. The journey of Black & Bold started with us opening our online Shopify store while we were burning beans in my business partner's garage. Shopify allows us to stay true to our mission by having an easily customizable and responsive site. They make it very easy for novices to try their hand in becoming entrepreneurs. I was able to do it without any technical background and I'm very grateful for Shopify. My advice to anyone thinking of starting a business is to just start selling on Shopify today. When you're ready to share your business with the world, grow it on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform trusted by millions of businesses like Black & Bold. Get a free 14-day trial at shopify.com slash play and start selling wherever your customers are with easy-to-use tools and friendly 24-7 support. Go to shopify.com slash play right now. Shopify.com slash play. Listening to college football on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Mark Kester, Trick Kelly Stopper, Ian Fitzsimmons with you from the Swamp in Gainesville, Florida 3, Kentucky nothing, 4.33 to go. First quarter, John Madani, our producer, Frank Lover, our engineer tonight, Keith Parsons, Ken Benowitz, our statistician and spotter. Glad you are joining us. Jim Basquell back in the studio and a defensive start to this ball game and Will Levis probably still looking for chiclets and uh, wiping the cobwebs away after getting lit up on that series. I would like to say, sitting beside you, I don't know what he feels like, but I know what that feels like. Yes. And Fitzy has a really good point because at the last minute, as Levis is working through his progression, he turns his head right into it. 
The intention of the defender does not matter one lick. Either it happened or it didn't, and that to me was an egregious targeting, and I can't wait to see what our video that we get from... Yeah, from Steve Shaw, who sent it out Shaw. every week, right? I mean, we will get it every week, and that will be, like, first in line. Fitzy, you're behind the Kentucky bench. What's going on? Uh, he's fine, guys. He's kind of laughing with coaches right now and his teammates. And, yeah, he may have needed a smelling salt or two, uh, you know, but a little ammonia. But he's good to go, man. Will Levis is fine. He'll, he'll be right back in. we got two guys that are built to last, 6'4 and 240 yeah. in Levis good and point. Anthony Richardson. Richardson had a big completion to Ricky Pearsall on the last series that set up the 39-yard field goal and the difference in our game right now, 3 nothing Florida. You know who's making both of these quarterbacks a lot of money? Josh Allen. Yeah, that's a because great point. Both of these guys are being compared to the guy who might be the MVP of the league in 2022. So, no doubt about it, but you see that physically. First down and 10 from the 10-yard line for Florida going right to left as we watch it. It's a run on first down. And this is ETN, Trevor ETN, off the left side, gets three yards. You might know the last name. Trevor ETN is the younger brother of Travis, who played at Clemson and now is with the Jacksonville Jaguars just up the road. And ETN is a special talent, and Florida knows that, and they wanted to get him more of a run tonight and feed him a little bit. He mixes up the run game because of his talent. Second down and seven from the 13-yard line. Snap to Richardson, play fake, roll to the right, throws down the sideline. Henderson makes the catch, sees his foot tap in bounds, and is out on the right side across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Jordan Wright in coverage that time in a gain of 28. And Jordan Wright was tailgating Henderson. Nobody jammed him at the line of scrimmage. There was coverage over the top in Kedron Smith. Here's a quick snap and a quick pass, and the tight end, a zipperer, drops it. Rather, that's uh, Dante Zanders. They have two tight ends. Both start with the letter Z, zipperer and Zanders. Zanders can't hang on. It's second down. That